The world has fallen in love with the Ford Bronco. Its combination of good looks, off-road prowess, and sheer cool factor has given it a cult-like following across the world. Unfortunately, not everybody in the world will ever get to drive one. Ford, in its infinite wisdom, will not, for the moment at least, be bringing the Bronco to the UK. But there is hope, and it comes from import specialist Clive Sutton. And here it is, an actual Ford Bronco from America in the actual United Kingdom. This one is a four-door convertible Outerlands edition imported by Clive Sutton for one of their customers. What I want to know is, what's it actually like to live with? Let's have a butcher. Let's have a look around, shall we? The new Ford Bronco, I would say, goes up in direct competition with the Land Rover Defender and the Jeep Wrangler because all three cars come with the option of either two or four doors. This is the convertible version though, and that's a big advantage this car has over the Defender, which doesn't have a convertible option. I'm gonna take the roof off this and show you exactly how that affects the driving experience a little bit later. But for the time being, let's focus on the design. A little bit of trivia for you. This was designed by Moray Callum. He is the brother of Ian Callum, and Moray was responsible for designing the Ford GT supercar, and Ian famously was responsible for a whole bunch of Aston Martins and Jaguars, including the F-Type. So this was created by British design royalty. Now, the design highlights, you've got this big, bold Bronco badge that spans the entire front of the car. No Ford badges around here. The only Ford badge is located around the back, incidentally. And then you've got this solid metal bumper just here, which I don't think would be legal in the UK or the EU. This is an American thing. I mean. I dare say that could cause quite a lot of damage, so that's not gonna work over here very well. But you do have these lovely looking LED headlights which look a bit like the power button you get on your remote control. And then underneath you've got a solid metal under tray which could be useful for bouncing off boulders and other hard objects whenever you go off-roading. These bits are interesting, actually. These are called latch down points and they basically work in conjunction with this accessory point on the top of the roof here. That allows you to connect, for example, a roof rack so you can carry around, that's nice and easy, isn't it? Carry around heavy accessories like camping gear or roadkill you've acquired along your journey and just latch it down on these points. These actually work quite well in giving you a good idea of where the vehicle's located on the road, so double feature there. Let's take a look around the side. In profile, really good looking car. Nice and tall, nice and big, nice and aggressive with huge amounts of ground clearance there. The wheels and tire combination are interesting because they look small, but they're actually massive. These are 18 inch wheels, but the tires are so big, they make the wheels themselves look a bit smaller. They're 255 70 R18s. On top of that, you've got these big chunky wing mirrors, powder coated running boards down there at the bottom. And that's useful because it's such a tall car. I mean, look at that. Without those, you'd find it quite tricky to jump in and out of the vehicle, but that's a useful addition. This is the Outer Banks model, by the way, and it's quite a high specification version of the Bronco. And it basically gives you, amongst other things, these body coated wheel arches instead of the black cladding that you get on some of the lower spec models. Around the back, now, Again, really nice to look at, big, chunky, outstanding design, I think. You've got these vertical rear lights here. You've got the side hinged boot, which is actually quite heavy if you want to pull it yourself, but the trick is just to pull it and let the gas strut do its work, nice and easy. Then you've got a full-sized spare wheel just here with a protruding element down there just to stop other people bashing into it and ruining your alloys. And just up here, you've got a high-level brake light, which is bit on the flimsy side. Let's take a look inside. The interior is quite distinctive, or is it? There's a few familiar elements in here that I think you might recognize, starting with these little grab handles on the far left and far right hand side. I wonder where I've seen those before. Yeah, Land Rover Defender, but they're useful. There's another grab handle down here in the center, on the center console for your passenger to grab onto in case the going gets rough off road. The only problem is the build quality, hmm, a bit questionable. It seems to be moving around quite a lot. You don't get that movement in the Defender. But on the whole, 
it looks quite nice. I like the Bronco lettering down there on the dashboard. The shape and articulation of these vents is quite nice to look at. My only real problem though is the materials which feel a bit sort of low grade, especially in comparison to what I would say is a more premium product from Land Rover. But if you can ignore that, then you're gonna get on quite well with this Bronco. There's a couple of nice bits in here though. For example, up here on the roof, you've got these auxiliary switches, which are pre-wired to accept any accessories that you might wanna to fit to the car, like a winch or some roof lights, for example. You've also got an accessory point just up here on top of the dashboard where you can connect, for example, a camera to capture your off-road adventures. That's a nice touch. As for the infotainment, well, you've got a part digital readout for the driver alongside an analog speedo for some reason. And in the center for your main infotainment screen, you've got an eight inch display, although you can upgrade that to a 10 inch screen if you spend some extra bucks. This uses Ford's sync system, which isn't overly fancy, but it does get the job done. And it has things like wireless Apple CarPlay, for example, and it's really, really easy to use. Speaking of which, you've also got these lovely chunky switches down here just above the center console which makes it easy to operate things like your heating ventilation and climate controls and the volume controls of the car a couple more bits to talk about you've got your window controls on the center console rather than on the doors because the doors are removable and if you took the doors away then you wouldn't have your window switches so obviously that's where those live and you've also got a drive mode selector switch on the center console more about that a bit later on a couple of cup holders this netting on the door isn't overly fancy but it gets the job done and there's decent amounts of storage in the center console decent just not that fancy the boot, meanwhile, is simple but spacious with nearly 1,100 litres of storage, similar to what you'd get in a Defender and a Jeep Wrangler, although that drops slightly when the car is fitted with the optional hardtop. The Bronco doesn't have a seven-seater option, so boot space is always the same. Right, let me show you in the back of the Ford Bronco. It's nice and spacious in here. Decent amounts of legroom. That front seat's adjusted for me and then some, and I've still got room back here loads of headroom there are two versions of this car like i said there's a four door and a two door the two door only has two seats in the back this four door has three seats which is good except center seat isn't the most comfortable in the world you've got this lump in your bum which uh, would discourage me from sitting there i'm not really sure what it's for to be honest it looks quite weird and you'll see there's no fold out armrest already cup holders back here for some reason which seems to be a bit of an oversight but on the back of the center console you've got quite a lot going on here you've got 110 volt power outlet for plugging in a kettle when you're out camping for example uh, two usb ports and your inboard window buttons which is useful because obviously you can't have them on the doors one problem i've noticed though is this roof can you hear that it's super noisy. On the way here today, it was just flapping around in the wind. So the cabin of the Bronco is occasionally quite an inhospitable place if you're doing anything above sort of 50 miles an hour or driving on a windy day. But there you go. Speaking of which, even though it was a windy day, Storm Eunice was minutes away from touching down in the UK, I decided you can't drive a Bronco without taking advantage of its party trick, the removable doors and the convertible roof. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest roof to detach, so I did need to consult the internet for some instructions. The doors are far easier though. The Bronco includes tools that make it simple to undo the bolts, and the electrical connectors pop out very easily. The only real problem is knowing what to do with the doors once you've removed them from the car. So clearly the process of removing the roof and the doors is a massive faff. It's definitely not something you want to do every single day, especially in the UK where it might rain and it's always a little bit windy. You can probably hear a bit of that wind. It sounds like I'm in a washing machine, but forgive me. But how cool is this experience? It's incredible. This for me is the best convertible I've ever been in and I own a convertible Mustang. It feels like I can just reach out and touch the surroundings and high five strangers and pet dogs as they go by. This is brilliant. It doesn't get much better than this. It's such a vibe. What's it like to drive? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is the refinement levels. I know talking about refinement with no doors and no roof might sound a bit silly, but I did drive this car with the roof and the doors on earlier on. And it surprised me by how lacking in refinement it was. It was probably the worst refined car I've driven this year. It, just felt like I was driving a bit of a tin can really 
Sorry Ford, that's just what it feels like. There was a terrible amount of wind noise coming off these massive wing mirrors, noise coming off the roof as it flapped around, and the seats were moving around quite a lot as well, almost like it wasn't bolted down properly. But hey, take the roof off, take the doors off, and refinement doesn't really matter because it always feels like you're in a bit of a tornado anyway. Sorted. The seats in the Bronco are quite good, they're comfortable and supportive which I suppose is quite useful when there's no door, they keep you in place. There's also a good adjustment in the seats. You can crank them up quite high, so even if you're not a very tall person, you get a good view of the world around you. I quite like this steering as well. It's nice and light, nice and accurate. Not massive amounts of feedback coming off it, but it doesn't really matter. It's not a racing car, you don't need that. What's important is that it's easy to place the car on the road. The suspension is interesting. It's a bit of a roly-poly car, this. It doesn't really keep its composure on anything that doesn't resemble a perfectly flat surface. When you go through a bend, yeah, there's a lot of lean there. <laughs> and it can sometimes feel as if it's going to tip over. I suspect the suspension is going to be absolutely brilliant for off-roading. And I'm not going to be doing any of that today because it is someone else's car. Even if it isn't perfect for driving around on the tarmac. There's another thing that makes this car really easy to drive actually and it's the visibility. You can see everything, particularly with the doors off. You can see exactly where the curb is, which is great for parking. If I look behind me, there's almost nothing blocking my vision to see what's going on in my blind spot. And that's an important point because when you import this car, it's only available in left-hand drive. So being able to see all around you is going to be massively important. And with the doors and the roof off, no problems. In terms of engines, the Bronco is not available with a V8, which may come as a surprise. Instead, Ford offers either a 2.3 litre EcoBoost inline four petrol, making 300 horsepower, or a 2.7 litre V6, making 330. This car has the four cylinder engine, the 2.3, which is also the same engine they use in the EcoBoost version of the Ford Mustang, believe it or not. And actually, it's fine. It's not the last word in performance, but I don't think I'd want to go any faster in a straight line because inevitably you'd have to get to a corner and then get through that corner. And the Bronco isn't the best cornering car in the world. So this level of performance is actually all you need. The gearbox is a 10 speed automatic in this car. A manual is also available. And actually the auto is pretty slick. It just shifts up and down the box pretty rapidly. I sometimes feel like 10 gears might be overkill, but you can put it into sport mode. And when you do that, it tends to hang on to each gear for a little bit longer. So it feels less like a, a machine gun for gears. The Bronco's off-roading credentials are well documented. The car has several driving modes using a GOAT selector switch, GOAT standing for go over any terrain. On this Outer Banks version of the car, there's normal, eco, sport, slippery, sand, and mud and ruts. The GOAT selector also lets you choose between rear wheel drive, four wheel drive in high and low range, as well as hill descent mode. There's one clever little off-road trick that I wanna show you in this car, and it's called trail turn assist. So if I knock it into all wheel drive mode and press this button up here on the dashboard and then turn, what it will do is... <laughs> it just, it basically lets you do donuts in order to turn in a more tight, confined space. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know if we really need it, but how cool is that? Those who want a Bronco obviously won't be able to buy one direct from Ford, but Clive Sutton is importing versions of the car converted for use here in the UK. Prices start at £45,000, rising to £85,000 depending on your spec of choice. Clearly, this is some way above the £23,000 you'd pay for the car in America, or 30 grand in US dollars, but Clive Sutton handles all the import logistics, costs and checks to bring the car to the UK. They'll also sort out all the homologation and insurance changes necessary to make it comply with UK regs, and they'll give you a two-year, 30,000-mile warranty. So, what do I think of the Ford Bronco? Well, I've absolutely loved this car since the very first moment I cast eyes on it and I've always wanted to drive it. But driving it in the UK has made me realize it's maybe not as good as I thought it was. There's so many shortcomings, honestly. The quality of the interior, the driving experience, the lack of refinement, it all adds up. 
I have to say, the Land Rover Defender is by far a better car in so many ways. But, and this is a big but, this car is so much more fun. It feels like a car that just doesn't take itself massively seriously. Take the doors off, take the roof off, go for a drive with your mates, in the sunshine preferably, when it's not as windy as it is today. And trust me, you are gonna have an absolutely brilliant time. Call Clive Sutton, get one ordered, because you're gonna love it.